Should I show everybody the horrible thing we're going to put out in front of our house for Halloween? You should. Okay, but this goes on. This goes on for a lot. What? I don't think it's horrible. But I have a better name for it. What? Robot Bone Dog? It's Robot Bone Dog. It's the Hound of the Nashkervilles. You love it. It just doesn't stop. What's funny is Peggy's sitting right next to me and she couldn't possibly give us. It doesn't stop. Also, whenever it that that whenever the jaw opens, it's like shaking like an like like an AK forty <laughs> seven. Every time it opens its mouth, it's like ah, 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 ah. horrible thing. But of course, we had to have it. Ah, uh, hi. Is a cat in a box? Yeah. Peggy's hi. much more tolerant about being on the internet when she's in her box. <laughs> It's all about context. It's all, everything is context. Oh, so next week, as sure that might have tipped you off, next week is spoopy week, which means yes. it is almost time for our look back at the worst of the sexy costumes. Of I the... sent you a few today. Yeah, you did. Um, and just see, guys, we are aware of the sexy handmade costume. Yeah. yeah. If there's anybody on the internet who's not aware of the sexy handmade yeah. costume, I'm worried about them. Um, if you have something you want us that, that thinks it's horrible and you want to show it to us because, you know, it's kind of like when, when milk is spoiled and you're like, oh, is this bad? Smell it. Is this bad to you? Yeah. Um, you can send those along to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll be counting them down next week. But right now, we have other business to attend. Ugh. Come on. Intro. <laughs> Intro. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And where are we starting this week? Ugh. Everything makes me sad this week. Um. Okay, well, this guy kind of... You know what? I, I I have no sorrow for this gentleman. Um. Okay, everyone who is in the, the business of... I said business of... Everyone who owns a home has their own particular foibles to contend with. Yes. It's it's a thing you have to you, you deal with you have to deal with mowing the lawn you have to deal with weeding you have to deal with maybe putting up a fence just the, the regular stuff maintenance all of that I mean I don't personally have to deal with all of that because I have a Dan <laughs> but he tells me it's a big pain in the ass yeah and you know what it can also be a uh, Pain in the ass and sending you to the hospital if you're a complete idiot about it. I'm a little surprised that hasn't happened yet around here, I'm being honest. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Oh my god, this did send Dan to the hospital once. <laughs> <laughs> a squirrel did send Dan to the hospital once. No, not the hospital. <laughs> Squirrels did me in, North Carolina man tells 911 after being shot. By his own booby trap. Ooh, Dan in the background looking sexy as fuck. You got a fan. You can't have him. Edwin Smith set up the booby trap at his North Carolina home. The 69-year-old was the one who ran a tripwire <gasps> from his back door to a shotgun. Why? Okay, I didn't do that. Smith that was the... 
too much. Smith was the one who opened the door of his Cleveland County home and triggered the booby trap. But when it came to assessing blame, Smith singled out another culprit. Quote, this just sucks. Freaking, I think he said fucking, fucking squirrels did me in, Smith can be heard saying on Monday's 911 call. According to the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, Smith, quote, opened his back door to feed the squirrels outside. That's when the booby trap went off. A shotgun blast hit Smith's arm, something he told to the 911 operator, quote, I blew my arm off. He didn't. Please hurry. I'm going to die. Just tell everyone I love them. I'm out here in the driveway. Are we? What? A little dramatic, are we? I'm out here in the driveway. My arms blowed off. I'm shot anyway. I'm done in my life anyway. Smith did not die. His arm was saved by a deputy who applied a tourniquet. He was taken to an area hospital in Shelby. Likely I haven't seen that much drama since Miracle could see the bottom of her food bowl one time. And almost died. I just blew my arm off. Is your arm still attached? Yes. Then it's not off, is it, sir? But but I'm going to (laughs) die. All right. So many things to unpack here. So many. So many. A booby-trapped shotgun. That's a lot. That's That's some... Okay, that's Fallout. That's fucking, that's Fallout. That You walk around in Fallout and people actually do this in the game. There are booby trap shotguns. Like I know squirrels can be annoying. I have chosen to embrace them and we set up a squirrel feeder. He was feeding the squirrels. He liked the squirrels. Then why was he trying to kill them? He wasn't. The booby trap was for people. Then what does this have to do with the squirrels? They they tried to kill him because he went outside to feed them and he set off his own booby trap. Oh. <laughs> more sense. He and it was the squirrels. It's their fault. They they tricked him somehow. What? <laughs> The squirrels, they tricked him into shooting himself. He was just going to murder people. Yeah, if you came to his house and he didn't want you there, you you, you were going to die. Because he had a tripwire shotgun. For instance, if he did want you there and forgot the tripwire was there, like he did when he went the fuck outside. You were going to die. Yeah, you know. I mean, well, that, that's just, I mean, that, that just happens. It's, 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 a, it's one of the things you have to accept when you set up a tripwire shotgun. I mean, that, I that's just, just that's just science, Tara. I just do not understand the American South. Like, what, what, what is wrong with you guys down there? Part of me is, is at this point wants to go not all South. You know, I want to stress that we have actual cities here that are like <laughs> little islands of sanity. It's just whenever you drive 20 miles in any direction from a city down here, Shit gets a little fucking weird. You just, you, it, yeah. Like, is it the grits? (laughs) Do grits just make you go crazy? No. (laughs) You're not exactly bringing endorsement. I love you, but you're not exactly the picture of mental health. Oh. Well, let's go further north for our next. This one is actually so weird and and this belongs on our show and yet it is so polite it is utterly Canadian. This is like the most Canadian of break-ins I've ever heard. <laughs> most Canadian of break-ins. It is. Did they break in to play hockey? <laughs> no, they broke in to clean their house. What? Royal Canadian Mounted Police are reminding Nova Scotians to lock their doors after a reported uh, after investigating a report of suspicious activity. Uh, the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police said just before 3 p.m., officers responded to a complaint there were two suspicious women in a home. The Mounties were called by the homeowner, who was not home at the time. The homeowner had been contacted by a concerned neighbor 
after the two women were observed in the home with a vacuum cleaner and a mop. Police later determined the house was left unlocked in order for the neighbor to walk the, the owner's dog. Instead, two women showed up, cleaned the house, and left without knowing they had the wrong address. Although I want the- somebody to break into my house. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, who put that kind of break in? <laughs> although Someone might bite you, but although the house was clean for free, Royal Canadian Mounted Police would like to take this opportunity to remind homeowners to ensure their doors are locked at all times. You're kind of undercutting the message, there, guys. Seriously, yes, make sure your doors are locked at all times, or magical fairies might clean your house. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thanks. They were locking my door again. This is the most Canadian break-in there's ever been. Yeah. This is some... You guys, somebody broke into my house last week, eh? Oh, yeah, Hoser. Who did? What happened? Oh, yeah. Some Hosers broke into my house and they cleaned it from top to bottom. (laughs) I don't even have an answer for that. (laughs) It does! Like, I'm trying to picture if one of my friends said that. It would be like, that's... Terrible. <laughs> and now, even better, the entire the entire country's legalized weed. So if they were they now now they're not just super polite; they're completely laid back about it on top of everything else. <laughs> Until hockey. Until hockey. Well, I, you know what? Is it possible marijuana is going to ruin hockey? No, hockey is like religion up there. Yeah, but you know, it's every- like soccer in Europe. How how hard can you bay for blood when you are stoned off your ass? It's like a whole other level. A whole <laughs> other level. Oh, a damn computer wrote in the channel was, how rude was that, eh? I mean, they left before I could say thank you. <laughs> the nerve of some people. <laughs> that, is, that is just like the most Canadian crime I've ever heard of. That's such. That's so wholesome. <laughs> Down here, we get people break into people's houses, get naked, and eat their food. Yeah. Up there, people just break in and clean your shit. <sighs> oh, were they naked? No, they weren't even naked. No, they just tidied up. <laughs> they just tidied the house up. It's, that is that is so beautifully Canadian. I love it. Oh, love- Canada. Can you just look, guys? I know it's it might be a bit of a trouble. Can you like invade us and like you know? Oh, they don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> Come on, annex something. I am a little surprised Canada hasn't started talking about a wall and, and just to annex a couple a states. Border, if anybody needs a fucking border wall, Justin Trudeau's got to be like looking south, like man. Look, I, I guarantee you, they an- crazy down there. You guys, if they annex everything north of Virginia, people would probably be cool with it. I don't know, man. There's some crazy, like out west, like. Well, think, nobody like- actually lives there. There's like True. five people in Montana. I was literally about to say that exact sentence. That's <laughs> creepy. <laughs> hey, you want to know? It's even creepier. No. Well, I'm going to tell you. This... If we have a mind mill, that's pretty bad. <laughs> like, it's... I know we've been doing this a long time. I, okay, th- this robbery, may, I, I don't... Th- Kansas. Giant inflatable colon stolen. <laughs> In Kansas City. That's where he's from. Someone has snatched a giant inflatable oh, colon. Yeah, that something. explains a lot. <laughs> it's the same city. Someone has snatched a giant inflatable colon used to teach about the dangers of colon cancer. The University of Kansas Cancer Center said Friday a news released that it was stolen from a pickup bed in Brookside. Surgical oncologist John Ashcroft says colon cancer is a tough subject for many to talk about. And the giant inflatable colon is a great conversation starter. You know, I found that was true when I was dating as well. <laughs> giant inflatable colon, great conversation starter. Really breaks the ice. It's 10 feet long, weighs 150 pounds, and is valued at $4,000. It's owned by the Cancer, the Cancer Coalition, which hosts 
walking and running events under a campaign called Get Your Rear in Gear. <laughs> the Cancer Coalition ships the inflatable colon across the country to help see in a unique unique way the progression of colon cancer. So let's start with the whole premise of the inflatable colon. They set this thing up and you walk through it to explore colon cancer. This is like the the this is an idea somebody at Dis at Disney World wrote on a napkin and when they were like really fucking drunk and it ended up in the bottom of a waste bin. We went to did was it you that I went with to the infectious disease thing at the aquarium? Oh, Crino says stealing a colon is a really shitty move. Yeah. I don't remember. I went to an aquarium at one point and they had for some reason, the aquarium had a special exhibit on infectious diseases. And like you could walk through a molecule of bubonic plague. And stuff. OK, you know, that that's a, oh. that's a little interesting because for one, the inside of bacteria and viruses are interesting. They have all different mechanisms to fight you know, back against a host organism that's attempting to stop them. And for another, it's not a colon! Listen, if porn has taught me anything, it's that the inside of the asshole is very interesting. <laughs> However, if someone texts you and says, bring that big ass over here, that's not what they mean. Uh, poor, that, that, yeah, all of this lead up to why would you yeah. possibly... What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with a fucking... Is there a large market? Is there a fence somewhere saying, hey, guys, I need you to get me something. Like, like, yeah, Wallace, what do you need? I need a giant inflatable colon. Like, were you really stuck for a bouncy castle at your kid's birthday? Party? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rocket Raccoon is real. <laughs> I need that guy's colon. So who wants to get me a colon? Somebody get me a fucking colon in here. The fuck kind of crime is this? Like, you can't display it. No! This? Yeah, I mean, the minute you inflate this thing, somebody's going to go, wait a second. That's not your colon. That's a huge asshole. Yeah, and they're not talking about the colon. I just... Oh, we could do this all day. We could! Just, why would you just... Who sees this is like, oh, yoik. I mean... We, College oh. students. That's on the front lawn of, like, a frat house somewhere, I bet you. And they put a slip and slide through the middle of it. Woo, we're doing anal, dudes! <laughs> They're all doing the slip and slide drunk, singing the diarrhea song from when you were in third grade. Well, this next one, this is going to piss you off like nobody's. It pissed me off like nobody's well, business. Good. Everybody angry. We have some more bullshit from the airlines. Every week with the airlines Every now. Week. It used to be the joke about comedians was they would always get up and have some routine about the airline food. And I'm like, motherfucker, we got you beat. Yeah. We keep this shit fresh. And God, I wish we didn't. The Southwest Airlines unwanted game of footsies on Southwest Airlines flight ends in emergency landing Denton man's arrest. Now, let's start with this headline. An Unwanted game of footsies. No, there's a word for that. It's called assault. I think unwanted games of footsie are just kicking people. Yeah. Uh, a Denton man touched a woman on Southwest Airlines flight this week and then yelled at flight attendants after she moved to a new seat, causing the flight to be diverted. Justin Riley Bradford, 29, faces a felony count oh, of... Oh, they don't know what footsie is. They don't. 
Footsies. <laughs> the, the, the channel's like, what's Footsies? I don't understand. What is that? Little I, darling. Aw. Justin Riley Bradford, 29, faces a felony count of interfer interference with a flight crew and a misdemeanor assault charge. According to the complaint, Bradford got on Southwest Flight 859 from Los Angeles to Dallas, sat in the middle seat. The woman in the aisle seat said that Bradford put his arm on her leg as the plane was getting ready to take off and that she leaned away from him and tried to ignore him. But Bradford got closer to the woman as she later told an FBI agent that he began to, quote, play footsies with her. She asked him to stop kicking her and then tugged on her sweater and started asking when he's tugged on her sweater and started asking personal questions, her name, where she lived, whether she was staying alone at a hotel. Oh, hell no. <clears throat> when the woman declined an invitation to go out with him, Bradford whispered, quote, don't fuck with me into her ear. The woman then asked a flight attendant if she could move to another seat. The flight attendant, who thought Bradford and the woman were a couple based on how close they were sitting to each other, changed the woman's seat, then retrieved her, bl her belongings. When she brought her a drink later, she was crying and said Bradford had come to the new seat and confronted her. So, asshole. When the flight attendant spoke to Bradford, he responded in a belligerent manner and started cursing and yelling. Bradford wasn't acting, quote, like a normal person, seemed to go from zero to 60 in nanoseconds. Complaint says uh, the leading flight attendant to believe he might be on drugs. Uh, they notified the pilot. Flight was taken down. He was taken into custody. In an interview with authorities, Bradford said he and the woman had been watching videos on her computer and he thought she might be flirting with him. He may have misread the situation, he said. You mean you were watching <clears throat> videos on her computer over her shoulder? Probably. Bradford also admitted to using methamphetamines the day before the flight and said he had overdosed on heroin Saturday. <laughs> he also told the FBI agent that God had been talking to him during the flight. Okay, God definitely didn't tell you to grope some woman on fucking Southwest. No, he didn't. Because that, that's, you know, that we talk that's about... That's not a thing God's going to tell you. <clears throat> we, talk, we, we talk about do not take the Lord's name in vain. This is one of those, I think he might take that shit personally. Yeah. Don't bring my ass into this. Leave me the fuck out of that. To just... Just like, yeah, I was on, uh, I was on meth yesterday. Uh, oh, and I overdosed on Saturday. That was a thing, guys. That, Heroin. That's, that's what I needed the meth for. To start my heart back up. Yeah, seriously. You're not living your best life, pal. No. Cause <laughs> Moo Moo for the channel is like the aristocrats. Yeah, pretty much. Everyone, everything you've done here, everything was wrong. Like start to finish. Flying sucks so bad anyway. Just, just leave people the fuck alone on the plane. Don't touch them. No. Don't bother them. Do you know when I'm flying, the, the most beautiful sensation ever is when I finally sat down and everyone's gotten on the plane and they've closed the doors and the seat next to me is empty. empty. <clears throat> that's like that's like a special little shine. The the little ha music and it's just it's beautiful i put my leg up on that seat i lean back i stretch out and i'm like this is all mine that's the best time when flying like just just leave people alone leave people alone no one i don't know if you remember a few months ago this chick on twitter went viral yeah because the two people in front of her were like flirting like, and stuff and yeah she yeah. asked to switch seats with some lady so she could sit with her husband. And then she, I guess she made a joke that like, oh, well, the guy I'm sitting next to is cute. Ha ha. And then she fucking stalked these people for the yeah. whole flight while they made conversation and like posted pictures of their elbows touching and shit. And, and, and then when she went the viral, was she, cool with it. the woman was not cool with it. And then when she went viral, she tried to like get a media deal out of the whole fucking right. thing. She tried to get, like, a book deal, and I'm like, 
You didn't ask them. Like, that's, I'd be pissed. My whole deal with flying is I just, I, I want to get to where I'm going without having to talk to a single human being. I'm just so concerned with not plummeting out of the sky. Well, there is that too. That I don't want to be bothered with anybody's fucking bullshit. I've I've sat next to people. I just want to who... drink my coke and have my drama mean and listen to my music or I... watch a movie because Dan remembers to put movies on the tablet and I don't. And wait to be back on the ground. I have sat next to people who made me like rethink you know if the plane falls down it might not be so bad i'm really 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 good at pretending to be asleep <laughs> it's a skill um, i learned at slumber parties as a teenager to find out if people were talking about me it's true so, i know that's that's messed up but i was really insecure teenager so each week we, we, we say, oh, this is, this happened before. How does this keep happening? This is, has never happened before. And I don't know how it even happened once. I, I, the, the, the series of events that led to this outcome. Grandparents' ashes allegedly baked into cookies student brought to school. I mean, obviously, this was Keith Richards' kid, right? <laughs> Police are investigating after a high school student. Oh, shut up. 75% blah, 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 blah. It won't though, let me. Oh, God. Autoplay. It's just about the 75% off sale. So. Police, <laughs> Police are investigating after a high school student allegedly made cookies with a disturbing extra ingredient. According to student witnesses, two students were part of a plot to make and pass out sugar cookies with one of their grandparents' cremated ashes baked inside. Why? Police said the cookies were distributed to at least nine students. Testing is underway to determine if they actually contain the remains. No adverse health reports have been reported. I, it's, why? Why would you do this? I mean, you were pretty fucking goth in high school. You were. <laughs> Dan has got. What are your go to on shit like this? <laughs> the that I know. You're the only one that listens to. Lindsay. I wouldn't bake fucking cookies. That's what I was about to ask you. No. Like, would you do this? Like, no, no. You're the only person I know who listens to like limpy wristed stompy. You're not my real dad music. So I have to ask you. <laughs> Till death do you, you part, Dan. Doing? Till death do you part. Married. married. Loves me forever. I do. I just... Why in God's name would... Seriously. I that That's... Like, just why? Did you think it was funny? Why did you think it was funny? If it comes out, this was for YouTube. I'm just... That's it. I'm done. I, cause, gee, why would you? I got nothing. I got nothing. Just, just what the fuck? I did so much silly shit in high school. Shit I'm not happy with, immature shit, ridiculous shit. Never have I ever baked my grandparents' ashes into cookies and handed them out to people. You never tried to serve somebody dead people? Nope. I didn't say that. <laughs> Who I married. <laughs> you got it. You got to admit, that's a hell of a never have I ever. <laughs> what is your not my dad music? I don't know. <laughs> He listens to music where, like, either the singer sounds like Cookie Monster or, <laughs> like, the only people I've ever seen dance to it are doing so many webs and probably <laughs> refuse to call Carl their real, real dad. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's all very sad. It's, yeah. Uh, how did... 
I never want teenagers. I never, ever, 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 ever want to be in a situation. This is why I have cats. I never want to be in a situation where I'm responsible for teenagers because teenagers are the worst thing. And this is like three. I got, I got, I got a little trinity of teenage nieces and nephews now. Because my two nieces and my one nephew have all hit that teenage thing, and I'm like terrified. <clears throat> I'm like, this was easier when you were little and everything I did was cool. Now, like, nobody over the age of 20 is cool. Well, to be fair, it's because nobody over the, everybody over the age of 20 is trying to destroy the planet, so. Yeah, but I just mean, like, <laughs> I, you know me, I'm really, I'm really into cool land. Yeah. And now three of those little monsters are teenagers. And it's really, really way harder to be cooler to teenagers than it is to fucking seven-year-olds. Well, it's because when we were teenagers, we were the worst thing. Yes. <clears throat> I say this from... The worst creature. Just... I was the worst when I was a teenager. I was fucking insufferable. Yeah, yeah. Ditto. I thought I knew everything. Yep. I got in a corn fight at the movie theater. I dressed like an idiot. My hair was always in my face. I mean, shit, when you're a teenager, if you read two years, if you're able to read two years past your grade level, you think you're God's gift to the goddamn planet. Oh, yeah. You think you're a fucking genius. <laughs> yep. Every thought that enters your head is a golden kernel of wisdom nobody has ever thought of before. Yep. And you don't know anything. You're a fucking idiot. Yep. And you think this will be so cool, you guys. I and mean, like, thank God we didn't even have social media. So there's no documentation of us being these monstrous little assholes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel bad for the teenagers of today because when they reach our crusty old grumpy age and think about what assholes there are, they were, there's evidence. There is a paper trail, so to speak. That never goes away. And I really feel bad for them about that because if I had to watch video of myself at like 15 now, I would just never leave my closet. So our our last story this week is uh, one more of uh, just if all that had happened in our American government had not shaken your faith and the foundations of our institutions. Here's here's another little uh, little quake to add to that equation uh geez how let's tell, let's play a game how did this guy get a security clearance presidential helo mechanic in meth bust oh but wait it's way it's way nuttier than that a mechanic who helps maintain the white house helicopter fleet is facing criminal charges after allegedly calling the cops while under the influence of methamphetamine to report his family is being held captive by three armed invaders. In response to a 911 call about armed intruders, eight cops raced last night to Port St. Lucie, uh, Florida. <clears throat> yeah, Before just the- spring training. Yeah, uh, Florida home that Cody Haynes, 30, shared with his girlfriend and the couple's young daughter. Upon arriving at the residence, cops were told by Haynes that three quote African American mass subjects had stormed the home hours earlier and held his family hostage for hours. Haynes, seen above, claimed that he was eventually able to escape with his daughter, believed his girlfriend, quote, remained inside the home with the perpetrators. A subsequent search of the home revealed it to be empty and its rooms were intact with no no indication a struggle had ensued. Cops did, however, discover meth and assorted drug paraphernalia inside a box in the master bedroom. Haynes was sweating profusely and his breathing was slightly labored when questioned by cops. Asked about the narcotics found, Haynes copped to having smoked meth earlier inside the residence. He claimed the mask intruders forced him to smoke meth for hours and he was unable to escape any earlier. So, three African Americans broke into your home to force you to smoke drugs. Is that your story? And then they just left. 
After being handcuffed, this gets, it gets better. Haynes was asked to provide police with his girlfriend's phone number. When Haynes then activated his cell phones, cops saw that, quote, a website explaining the effect of hallucinations was immediately displayed in the screen. So he had already Googled, how do I know if I'm too high? <laughs> Yeah. And left that shit up on his screen, and the cops were like, uh, what did I say? Nothing! You didn't see that! That didn't happen. Oh, apparently his girlfriend said that he's using the meth to treat his anxiety. Meth causes anxiety. <laughs> In an interview, Tara Fru told police that Haynes suffered from anxiety and recently been using meth during his time at home. Um, if if the meth, if this is him on meth, I would hate to see how anxious he is without it. I have heard, like, they're using LSD as an experimental treatment for depression, and I'm very curious about that. Because I have depression, and, you know, LSD sounds more fun than Cymbalta. <clears throat> but I don't think meth is going to help your anxiety. Yeah, but I'm thinking if you have hallucinations, you don't take acid. Yeah. Or if you think you might be hallucinating, maybe verify with someone else. I guess you can't because you're hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Purple Dinosaur, am I hallucinating? <laughs> like, maybe just don't do math, though. So. And here, just to circle back to why this is all so concerning, he is employed as a helicopter mechanic with Sikorsky Aircraft, earns more than $150,000 annually and maintains a top secret security clearance due to his work with the presidential helicopter fleet. You're making six figures and you're doing fucking mess? <laughs> you could be doing better drugs. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is what you do when you can't afford the good drugs. <laughs> <laughs> You're There's doing no excuse for that shit. You're doing the shitty. Why are you doing the shitty drugs? I oh okay. So this is a guy who is responsible for making sure the presidential helicopter doesn't fall the fuck out of the sky. Maybe that's why he's doing that. I look forward to your comments. I was thinking I, I should stop talking now or when you get a visit from people. Yeah, you just, just... <laughs> you just zip it. I also, I, I mean, also, well, three African Americans, huh? Why is it whenever white people fuck up, imaginary black people are to blame? Always. <laughs> Always. There's never an imaginary white dude. No, it's never it's never an imaginary white dude. Man, if there were as many of dad wearing a polo demanded my wallet. <laughs> if there were as many imaginary black people as there are actual black people, we would be white people would be like five percent of the planet. Yeah. Yeah. We'd already be extinct. I every time it's just Imaginary black people. Oh, Peggy got curled up in a little tiny ball in her box. Peggy knows better than us. She is a yeah. wiser creature than us by far. Every now and then while I'm watching the news, like I look at my cats and I am jealous of them. They don't give a shit. They don't have to give a shit. They're cats. Don't have to worry about any of this bullshit. Your biggest worries are like, is your food bowl full? Did the human scoop your poops yet? And are you going to be a dick to the new cat in the house today? You know what? Problems. Even, even if we actually killed all, if we all killed over dead tomorrow, the cats would be fine. They would sort themselves out. They would they hunt. Figured. I mean, they, I'm Simba's therapy animal, so I think he'd be very upset. Yeah, but they'd be, they'd survive just fine without us. They don't need our asses. They tolerate us. They, they they put up with us because we feed them. 
I guess I actually thought the other day, like you, 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 you've LARPed vampire. Sadly. And I realized that World of Darkness vampires are basically house cats. They're 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 descended from ancient, ferocious, feral beings, and you know, living in domesticated environment together does not come naturally to them. But that's where the food is. <laughs> so they go out of their way to not kill each other, and instead satisfy themselves by being super dramatic bitches. <laughs> Is that Vampire the Masquerade, or is that House Cats? <laughs> well, I guess the first thing we learned this week is if you're pulling down six figures, get the good drugs. Yeah. Because the bad ones are bad ones for a reason. I mean, don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you say don't do drugs. Again, I want to reiterate, all of fucking Canada just made weed legal. We that's need the just, drugs. That's like <clears throat> booze, though. That's not drugs. <laughs> let's be let's be real. There's drugs and there's drugs. Well, we need something. Yes, but when I say don't do drugs, I mean don't do shit that will make you do this. I've learned that teenagers are a special kind of awful. And if, if you're a teenager watching this one, you shouldn't be watching this. But if you are, come back and watch this again in like five years, and you're gonna be you're gonna be like, yeah, I was I was the worst. I was Isn't there a My Chemical Romance song about how much teenager stuff? I don't know. I don't listen to My Chemical Romance. I think the chorus is actually "Teenagers scare the living shit out of me." We've learned if you overdose on heroin, then take some meth. Maybe you shouldn't get on the plane that day. Just just hang out in the hotel for one more day, man. Ride that shit out. That's because promised you're going to have more problems than you were hoping for once you get on that plane. And um, no matter what drugs you've done, keep your fucking hands to yourself. Yeah. We've learned that people will steal a giant inflatable colon. That has no practical use, no potential resale value. I gave two practical uses. Bouncy castle, slip and slide. Don't steal colons. We've no. learned that Canada has the best crimes. Yeah. <clears throat> Canada, I, you're, just, you're just too much. I want Canadian crimes. Those are awesome crimes. Why do they get the good crimes? I know. And finally... I want, I want the cleaning burglars. And finally, we, we've learned if you set up a potentially fatal booby trap that could kill yourself or others, don't try to pawn that shit off on the squirrels. No. Leave the squirrels Why? alone. They don't have thumbs. They don't. They couldn't rig that. It's not... She's snoring. She's in her little box snoring. I'd pick her up so you can hear, but she'd wake up. Hey, buddy, want to buy a colon? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Are you going up the... Hey, hey, come here. You want to buy a colon? <laughs> I got a colon. You want to buy a colon? Yeah, it's got some polyps, but they're just decorative. <laughs> I can get you a good deal on a colon. 